Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth, this is Frizzy Lizzy Stitches, and this is Floss Tube number 37. Hello everybody. <laughs> so today is um, February the 4th, 2023, and it is Saturday night, and Mr. Wilson is hanging out with us today. <laughs> um... I guess I had set up all of my filming stuff to be over here because I figured, you know, Saturday night we'll do chill, like, on the floor, you know, I got a drink, it's, you know, chill vibes, right? And Mr. Wilson decided that this was indeed a chill spot because he figured this was the perfect place to lay down. So I kind of just gently pushed him out of the way so that I could sit where I intended to sit um, for my video this evening. So anyway, um, but you might be wondering if you are a returning viewer why I am filming at night. Um, and that is because Bobby is working nights right now. And usually I film on like Sunday afternoon, um, but since he is trying to sleep during the day, I figured it would just be easier if I film my video at night when um, he's not around to be disturbed by me talking to my phone. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. It's also interesting too because I think the last um, maybe two or three videos that I put out, um, Bobby actually was here while I filmed, which is, which is new for me because um, usually I'm just home alone when I film. And so I feel like I spoke a little softer um, simply because like I basically was like, you play your game and you put your headphones on. Like, I don't want you to listen to me talk <laughs> because I, my desk is right there and his desk is right there. And um, yeah, so I basically, and I turn my chair around so that what I look at when I sit at my desk is the background for my video. And so I basically was like looking at Bob, the back of Bobby's head <laughs> while I'm trying to film my video. And he got these like noise canceling headphones for Christmas. So he probably really can't hear me. Um, but I do still feel a little bit self-conscious, I suppose. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, um, if you ever hear any clicking or, you know, like a keyboard or a mouse, that is totally Bobby on his computer playing games while I try to film my Foss too. But that is not the case today. We are home alone. Bobby left for work like maybe an hour ago and yeah, so I am trying to, um, I guess be a little more relaxed. Um, I feel like in the last couple video, well not last couple videos, I feel like every video I sit down to film and then I just get really nervous and then I, it takes me a minute to warm up and by the time I bring out my projects I'm like kind of calmed down enough I guess to be a little bit more relaxed but um, yeah, I'm trying to not put so much pressure on myself. <laughs> so, um, because I do that both in my personal life and in my work life. <laughs> so, as I have learned these past couple weeks. So, yeah, it has been two weeks since my last video. Um, and on the note of putting too much pressure on myself, I actually wrote a note to myself to read to you guys. <laughs> this is really weird. Okay, but I... I wrote this the day after I posted my video and I had gotten several comments from you guys and you're very lovely and you'll anyway I'm just gonna read this to you because um, this is what I was thinking the day after I posted my video <laughs> so um, so honestly I wasn't in the best headspace after filming that video but I posted it anyway and I'm thankful I did because your friendly comments made me feel better and honestly kind of reminded me why I make these videos. Not only to document my progress, but to also interact and chat with you all about this craft that connects us all. Sometimes I get all in my head when I start filming and I forgot to just enjoy it and relax. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna get emotional, but yeah, it really, I really was in a grouchy mood. I, right now, I couldn't tell you why I was grouchy, but um, I think I was probably, it was a Sunday evening and I probably was amping myself or overthinking things for work for Monday and the following, the upcoming week, if you will. And um, I think I let a little bit of stress get to me. <laughs> um, 
So, but yeah, I am, I'm just trying to remind myself to not put so much pressure on myself and to take it easy and yeah, really just not beat myself up. That's the big one. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, and I also like kind of had an epiphany last week too that I like get so in my head that I like forget to even like kind of go off of comments that I like I'll say stuff in my video and be like oh comment this or you guys will comment on some things that I said and then I just like totally like Psh, we're done and I never talk about it ever again so anyway I kind of wanted to change that a little bit so for this week <laughs> um, the main topics from my last video that a lot of you commented on was um, I had talked about uh, being annoyed with stitching with one strand because I can't do the loop method and so a few of you commented that yes Elizabeth you do need to learn how to do the pin, pin stitch and I have been trying it out um, I haven't done it really on my I, I did it a couple times on like with two strands just to test it out um, I don't think I've quite got the hang of it yet because um, I usually will have some like fluffy residue if you will <laughs> on the top that doesn't seem to get covered but I think I'm just not cutting the thread close enough to the stitching um, but one of you were was very kind and tagged me in a video from Adam Hart cross stitch on Instagram where she shows how to do the pin stitch um, and she does it like going from the top of your fabric down into the center of the stitch and then starting it that way and yeah so the way I've been practicing has been working pretty good like I said I'm just struggling with not cutting it close enough to the fabric and then it being a little wispy um, at the front and then the stitch looks a little fuzzy but um, and I definitely have noticed that I have to have like my super super duper sharp scissors to do that so that I can get that close to the um, fabric without and be precise if that makes sense so anyway I have yet to try uh, one of you said that apparently you can do the loop method with one strand I have not tried to look up a tutorial on that but um, I feel like I saw a brief video and it sounded like it, you ended up with two strands on the bottom leg and one strand on the top leg so I might have to do some more research into that um, because I, that could have just been a not great tutorial I don't know <laughs> um, but yeah so pin stitch or just like stitching it with one strand in general was kind of a topic of conversation last week and then Another thing that I thought was really fun is that you guys also love fountain pens. Um, so I know, I feel like what, if you're into any sort of craft, they all kind of sort of leak it out into each other. Um, but definitely, I feel like there's definitely more of a line between like paper crafts and fiber crafts. Um, so I thought it was very fun that a lot of you also are into fountain pens. Um, I currently only have the one, um, it's a Twisby Eco and um, it's great for beginners um, it does have like a piston filler I know not all of you are here to talk about fountain pens but um, basically that just means you stick the whole pen nib in the bottle of ink and then you like twist the top and it like sucks the ink up um, as opposed to like using a cartridge or something but I changed my ink out for the first time after I posted my video I think and um, it was definitely a learning experience uh, changing out the ink definitely helps you learn the anatomy of the pen <laughs> and I definitely was scared that I was gonna like break something but yeah Goulet pens if you're interested in fountain pens is a great resource because first of all they've been around for a very long time and second they have like a ton of tutorials around several different types of pens um, so if you get a popular pen like a Twisby Eco or something then it will be very easy to find um, some information on how to use your pen so <laughs> yeah but, and also, um, so I'm going to Stitch North um, in April, and there actually is a brick and mortar shop for Ferris Wheel Press inks. Well, it's, the company is called Ferris Wheel Press, but they also, they have inks and they have fountain pens. So it's like, I think it would be like 30 minutes out of the way for me, um, but I think I might take that detour because I feel like going to, that store in person would be so fun because they have such really pretty inks and um, like I said I think shopping for that in person would be really fun so <laughs> but yeah so 
that's kind of it, I guess, for um, last week's comments and things. Um, but yeah, so let's see, I mentioned that. Um, so what have I been up to the past couple weeks? Um, aside from stitching and um, kind of adapting to my responsibilities at work, <laughs> um, I've been also adjusting to Bobby working night shift. Um, he is almost done. He's been, he was scheduled to work night shift for three weeks and he has already worked two weeks. And so I guess he, this coming week is like the last week of night shift. And then I'm pretty sure he just told me that he has Friday night and Saturday night off next weekend. So that'll be really awesome. And then that should mark the end of his night shift. So, and then he'll go back to days, which was, I don't know. It's gonna be a lot better because I didn't really realize how much Bobby helped take care of Wilson. <laughs> um, Cause he would like take him out first thing in the morning and then take him out right before we went to bed. And even though that doesn't sound like a lot, like those little bits of time add up. And um, as cute as this little guy is down here, he is a lot to handle. <laughs> so, cause he's just a needy boy. But yeah, so, and then whenever Bobby and I do have time to hang out, uh, we try to squeeze in a few days of Stardew Valley. We actually started a farm together um, on my birthday, I believe. And so if you are familiar with Stardew Valley, uh, we, are on, we are almost at the end of summer. We're like on day 25 of summer, year one. So, and we, Bobby is already at Skull Cavern and mining some iridium ore. So <laughs> um, I pretty much stay on the farm and tend to the crops and collect like forageables and build things. And he is like in the mines and fishing so yeah anyway it's it's a good little balance we've got going on so I've been doing that I've been doing wedding planning um, it's been pretty good uh, I'm almost done with booking all of the major things and then I should be able to work on the details um, and then my mom and I'm pretty sure my dad sister and my grandma are gonna try to come uh, for spring break in March and then we can go wedding dress shopping. So that'll be really exciting. I have ideas in my head. I just, you know, you never know until you see it, I guess. But, um, yeah. So, and then, oh yeah, Wilson had a birthday. So Mr. Wilson here is a year old now. <laughs> um, his birthday was on January the 28th, um, which is actually also my dad's birthday. So we did a little FaceTime that day. And yeah, Wilson got pancakes for breakfast. That was his special birthday treat, except for he didn't really understand how to eat them because I like made like tiny pancakes. They were like probably this big and um, like the size of my palm, I guess. And yeah, he like licked the syrup off of them and then he like picked one up and he like laid down and like put it between his paws to try to like tear pieces off of it off. And so, the second one I like tore into little pieces for him so that he didn't have to do that. But it was just really funny because growing up I had Dotsons and they were just, they were after the food. Like you gave them the food and they were like, chomp, 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 it was gone. But it was really funny to give some pancakes to Wilson and he just like very gently licked the syrup off of them and like not really know how to eat it. So um, I guess we've, I guess Bobby and I have done good with not, um, you know, letting him have human food or whatever, but you know, I figured for his birthday, it was kind of a special occasion that he could have some pancakes. So, <laughs> but yeah. And then I guess the last thing that I wanted to be super chatty about, um, since we're like 14 minutes into this video already and I haven't shown you any stitching, <laughs> um, is today I actually went to Keepsakes and uh, Megan from Georgia Girl Stitching, uh, her and David, her husband, uh, are visiting Ohio this weekend and so she spent the day at keepsakes and so I went I went down there to hang out with her and everybody all the other people who go um, to stitch and it was a lot of fun um, I hadn't been to keepsakes since my birthday but I hadn't been to keepsakes to actually like sit and stitch since like I don't know November like before I got my job so um, yeah it was really fun we had a great time and I got a lot of progress in on my project which I took, that I took with me, which you will see soon. Um, Megan, however, did not stitch any. <laughs> which, honestly, if I were her, I probably wouldn't have either. Because um, you just got people to talk to and to go shopping and all that kind of stuff. So, But it was a great time. So, 
All right, I am gonna take a um, quick sip of my beverage <laughs> and then we can get into the stitching. <laughs> okay, so I actually, every time I edit my videos, every time I like get to a new section, I always start with, okay, so, or so, okay, anyway, and uh, it takes a lot of brain power to not do that. Anyway, I work, but let's see, last video, the last project that I worked on was, I'm pretty sure, Alice in Wonderland, uh, because I had just finished with that Whip Go goal for January, and then I decided, because since I finished my goal, like well before the end of the month, I decided to work on Sweetheart Campfire, um, kind of in the days between then and when the British Isles um, stitch along was gonna start. So I only worked on this for two days and it only got two and a half hours, but um, this is Sweetheart Campfire, so this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. Um, this is art by Thomas Kincaid and I got the pattern from an Etsy seller. And then, um, this is what it looked like last time I showed it to you, which is probably whatever my final New Year's 12 by 12 finish was. And this is what it looks like now. So I know it doesn't look probably like too much of a difference because I only put in like two and a half hours, which probably was like maybe 500 or so stitches, but well, maybe more than that. I don't know. I didn't actually count. Um, I, I think I do want to start tracking how many stitches though, so that when I show it to you guys for progress, um, it's a little bit more quantifiable than like, oh, I worked on this general area, you know. But um, this is what it's looking like. So I kind of just filled in more of this diagonal right here. Um, that's kind of the pattern that I am choosing to go with while stitching this. Um, yeah, I pretty much just zoom in on a, you know, so it's a decent size. And I will just kind of follow the diagonal up and down until that little piece is full. And then I'll move on to the next side. So, cause on Pattern Keeper, you can turn on all sorts of little grid marks. Um, you can turn on page lines, you can turn on diagonals going either direction. And yeah, anyway. So this is what I'm doing, diagonals. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't think there's too much else to say about this. I think I already told you last time um, I managed to, my pattern does not have a symbol for 310, but I was able to use the advanced options setting on Pattern Keeper to get it to assign all blank spaces a symbol. So now I'm actually able to track off the black stitches, which is a game changer. So that was also why I pulled this out because I really wanted to put that to the test. So, and it indeed is very helpful. So, <laughs> so my next project is, um, the newest stitch along from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, I accidentally last time said that it was Frosted Pumpkin, and I think most of you probably knew what I was talking about, but um, I did want to go ahead and um, uh, confirm that yes, I did say it wrong. It is not Frosted Pumpkin, it is Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, but this is a mystery stitch along. Um, the only part out right now is part one, and I have, uh, I'm happy to say that I finished part one. And I did, uh, last time I also mentioned that I wasn't sure if I was gonna use the kit fabric or use um, some opalescent fabric that I had on hand. And I decided to go with the opalescent fabric. So this is what um, part one looks like. Well, I don't actually need to show you that because I have part one complete. <laughs> so um, this is my uh, British Isles adventure stitch along from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, this, um, fabric is 32 count Lugana from Color and Cotton and the color is called Sea Breeze and like I said it is opalescent so it is sparkly um but yeah so this is um like I said part one um I actually so I stitched on this for nine hours and 42 minutes but it wasn't until like the last I don't know three hours or so that I decided that I wanted to start watching The Crown while stitching this because um First of all, I um, I frankly don't really know much at all about British history, um, aside from wherever the Americans are involved for like, uh, I guess like 1776 and you know, Hamilton and all that stuff. <laughs> um, so I decided to watch The Crown because I've never really been super into the whole royal, like keeping up with the royals. Um, but 
I have definitely, oh, I'm sorry, I'm scratching my eye because it freaking itches. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've never been into keeping up with the Royals because, I don't know, I just never really had too big of an interest in it. Um, but I, my mom and my sister absolutely love The Crown. And I had been wanting to watch it for a long time, but I just decided to finally do it. Because I felt like this was a great piece to do that with because um, when Caterpillar Crossstitch actually posted part one, they actually posted some like fun facts about some of the pieces that are present here in the um, stitch. So I did learn some things. So I'm gonna try to, um, you know, repeat what I learned so that it'll stick in my brain. <laughs> um, so obvious, I'm gonna do the obvious ones first because why not? Uh, we have a kilt, duh. Uh, but their little fun fact was that kilts were banned from 1746 to 1782, which is something I did not know. And then we have a lobster here. Um, I'm just assuming that since England is an island, um, technically, um, that they eat a lot of seafood. So also the fish and chips. Um, so those were kind of the obvious ones. And then uh, the next one that I kind of knew what it already was was Edinburgh Castle. And then, let's see, this, I was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> um, at first I thought it was supposed to be like a plane or something, but it is not. It is um, like a representation of, I think it's like the tallest um, sculpture. It's called the Angel of the North. Um, their little fun fact was that it is the same height as a five-story building. Um, and if you look up pictures of it online, it, it actually looks super cool and, you know, looks like an angel and not like a plane like this does, <laughs> but, um, yeah. And then this little tower right here is called Clifford's Tower, which is all that's left of York's Castle. And then this is, um, Blackpool Tower, and apparently it wobbles in the wind, so. <laughs> but yeah, so it's been really fun. Oh, and I think this little aisle right here is called Isle of Man. I think I looked that up. Um, just to make sure, but I also was like, um, when I, so this is a mystery stitch along, so the little, like, whole image for the pattern is just like a giant blurred, like, this is what it generally is going to look like, and my geography skills are not good, I will tell you that, <laughs> right now, <laughs> so I had, like, oh, that was so weird, the internet must have freaked out or something. I have like uh, one of those smart plug lamps and it like went off and it came back on. So, unless Bobby is like using his phone to trick me. I don't think he's doing that though. <laughs> anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, he literally just texted and said, that was me, oops. <laughs> That's hilarious, okay. Um, I seriously lost my train of thought though. Oh, I'm bad at geography. And I had literally like, I didn't, like, I could not tell you what the shape of the UK looked like or what even all was in the UK or any of that. So I am taking this opportunity to learn. <laughs> um, so this part right here is um, part of England and Scotland. So, and then also I had no idea that Wales was like its own country. I'm sure anybody who is from the UK is probably screaming at me right now. They're like, Elizabeth, you dumb American. <laughs> um, but I'm just being real here, okay? <laughs> so anyway, so this is kind of like the halfway point, I guess, around um, like Scotland and England. And then uh, we'll have uh, Ireland over here at some point. So I'm really excited to see what the other motifs are for this chart because I'm excited to learn. <laughs> Um, and I'm also excited to, uh, continue watching The Crown while I stitch on this because I just feel like, um, I'm also learning lots from The Crown. Like, I had seen The King's Speech with, uh, Colin Firth, but I literally had no idea, literally never made the connection that that was Queen Elizabeth II's father. Like, that seems like, well, duh. But I just never really, I feel like every time I watch anything that is related to British history, I'm like oh, there's the king, but I never like realized like in what order they go or what time frame and how things are connected and anyway. So like I said, I'm very happy and excited to be <laughs> learning while I'm stitching. And um, Wilson, you're on my bag. Excuse me. Uh, learn while I'm stitching and watching The Crown. <laughs> 
So you'll have to let me know if you have seen the crown and um, if you know if you like it, what you think of it. Do you keep up with the royal family? Uh, I'd love to know. I know Harry just came out with his book Spare that has been like all the rage. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited though to learn more about um, I guess the older parts. Well, not that old because. It's not like we're talking about like Queen Victoria or something, but um, it is exciting to learn more about like how Elizabeth started because um, I obviously never kept up with it and you know, like she, she died last year. So um, I feel like the only thing that has been like um, kind of at the forefront of my brain is kind of the more current events. So I'm excited to kind of learn about the the old stuff, if you will. <laughs> so anyway, I have probably embarrassed myself enough about British history, so I think I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> okay, so the next project that I worked on was for only one evening and it was only two hours, but it mainly was because I just wanted, it is a whip go goal, and I wanted to kind of get a jump start on it because I wanna, it's gonna be easy to knock out, um, which I guess I should just go ahead and say, um, well, I'll show you the project first, and then we'll talk about my whip-go goal. So, um, anyway, this is Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. Um, let's see. I forget always that I have the chart cover in here, and I don't have to put the picture on the screen. So, this is what it's going to look like. Um, and then, this is what it looked like last time I showed it to you, which was last video. Um, this did get called again. I had it on my whip go board twice each of each time to stitch for five hours and this got It got called for January and it got called for February So it is still in my cue snap because like I said, I was working on it But um, I did finish out that spider motif um, except for the web and then I did these two little Quakers and then the shadow behind this pumpkin so but honestly so I finished this spider and then I was like, oh my gosh, like that's like totally not right. That's like crooked or something. And I looked at the chart and I stitched it correctly according to the chart. But um, it is, it looks wrong and I might actually take it out and make it look more even because this is like supposed to be symmetrical, right? But let's see. So I don't know if you can tell, but let me get like a, do I have something to point with? Not really. I have this needle. I don't think you're going to be able to see that, though. Oh, yeah, you sure. Okay, so this right here, and then, you know, it has symmetrically around the circle. Well, if you look right here, this square is not connected to the little leg here. But all the other, the other three are. And I thought it was so strange because... Like, why wouldn't it be the same as the others, right? And I like looked at the chart to make sure that I did it right, and that's what the chart says. And um, so, yeah, but I, I don't know, unless it's like that for the sake of the little spider web that goes in the middle, I might change that to be more symmetrical with the rest of it. So, I don't know, what would you do? Would you leave it or would you fix it? <laughs> Even though technically it is correct based on the chart. <laughs> Unless there was like a chart um, edit that came out that she has on her website that I just don't know about. Um, so anyway, that is my progress on Halloween Quaker. Not too much to say about it, honestly. Like I said, it was only like two hours uh, worth of work. So the next project that I worked on was what I worked on today while I was at Keepsakes. And this is Sweetest Pie by Frosted Pumpkin. Um, it's going to look like this. And then it looked like this last time I showed it to you. And sadly, this is still in the cue snap because, like I said, I was working on it today. Uh, but this is what mine looks like now. Um, I added this. I actually got a lot of stitching done at Keepsakes. Um, like I said, I stitched for four hours. And that managed to get this entire pie, this bowl, this mixer, these two hearts, and then this little piece of border right here. So, yeah, I was kind of a stitching machine, <laughs> um, which I usually am in social situations because, um, I don't know, I feel like everyone else is usually more talkative than I am, so I just kind of sit there and listen, um, and then just stitch, 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 stitch. So, but yeah, and then you can kind of see 
there's part of the border right there and right there so I just have to connect this around and then there's like a couple more little bumps that go right there so this is almost done honestly I I could just finish it but I have four goals for the month of February um, this was one to do this pie one was to finish part one of British Isles which I did and then the other two goals are whip go goals so one of them I just showed you Halloween Quaker well, okay, this is, I'm, I'm done showing this to you. Let's just move on to plans now that I've, like, started talking about it. Um, so, yeah, my two whip go goals this month. Uh, Jesse pulled 7 and 11, which is hilarious because last month was 6 and 10. So, anyway, my whip go board is not really a board. It's just a list. Um, if you're interested in my whip go setup, I actually have a link to my Notion down below, um, which I talk more in depth in my whip parade for this year. Um, but yeah, so all my whip go goals are just listed out and I probably only have like five or six projects on there and they're just like they, each of them have multiple goals. So I was just, I think in between, you know, the irony of her pulling numbers that were very similar to last month and the fact that I have so many uh, repeated projects with different goals on my board that I actually am working on the same two projects <laughs> for February WIPCO as I did for January WIPCO. So um, for January WIPCO, if you remember, I did five hours on Halloween Quaker and then I did the Queen of Hearts block on Alice in Wonderland. Well, for February, it's five hours of Halloween Quaker and the Caterpillar block on Alice in Wonderland. So after I finished that Alice block, I really realized like how much time it took to do that whole block. So I kind of was like, holy crap, like I really need to like knock out these other goals like ASAP so that I can just spend the rest of the month working on um, Piper's knocking over the box that my LED light goes in. Anyway, um, oh and there's Wilson. He's gonna go get her. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so now this month is the caterpillar block and I knew that it was going to take a long time because the queen of hearts block took a long time and so I just decided to try to knock out as many of the other goals that I had like as fast as possible so that I could just use the rest of February to work on the um are you itchy you're making lots of noise yeah this is getting chaotic look at this baby <laughs> but anyway yeah so, because February is a short month, there's only 28 days as opposed to 30 or 31, and I want to be able to meet my goals. I know this, February is too early to get burnt out. So, <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I am going to um, look at him. He's just so sweet. You're so cute. You're just a teddy bear. His paws are really dirty, though, because he, like, he pees on his paws sometimes. And it's really annoying but he's cute so we love him <laughs> um I am this video is a mess um yeah I got goals I'm trying to meet them okay and February is a short month so I gotta chop chop <laughs> okay um that is literally all I wrote down for um my notes which is probably a good thing because this video is getting a little um out of hand um the animals are being very active and um i talked way too much about the uk and i don't even know that much so yeah this video might just be all scrap we will see <laughs> um yeah anyway if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out and that's whatever but my plan is to um, spend the rest of my evening just relaxing um, I might stitch some more I've already stitched for four hours today so maybe I'll play some video games I don't know but um, yeah my plan is to edit this video tomorrow and then post it so we will see um, I hope all of you have had a great week or a great couple weeks since I last talked to you and um, you should totally let me know if you're doing WIPGO, what your uh, plans are for this month. Well, I guess you don't have to be doing WIPGO. Just tell me what your plans are for this month, whether they be cross-stitch related or not. Um, and yeah, tell me all the things. Just whatever you want to tell me. 
dump it in the comments. I absolutely love seeing your comments. Um, I try my very best to um, at least heart everybody's comment to confirm that I did see your comment. Um, and on my better days, I am able to respond. Um, so yeah. And if you're ever working on something that you want to show me, you can totally tag me on Instagram and uh, I would love to see what you're working on. And if you are watching me on your TV right now, then take a picture, post it to your story, tag me, say hi. Um, that's always fun too. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to quit talking cause this, I, whew, I think I went off the rails a while ago. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I hope everybody has a great evening and I will talk to you next time. Bye.